the primary reason for the ones failing has been the direction of amyloid removal. And amyloid removal, while it's been linked to Alzheimer's disease by genetics and diagnosis, is not a proven cause of the disease. And in fact, these clinical trials have shown that it cannot be the cause of the disease because amyloid's been removed and the patients have not improved. So for phase three trials to work, they're gonna to have to take a different approach, possibly directed amyloid or tau or other proteins, but maybe looking at the more underlying causes of the disease. Well, the most promising avenue for Alzheimer's disease that's actually had effectiveness has been lifestyle modification, exercise, diet, stress reduction, um, having a meaning for life, um, reduction of depression, all of those have been shown to substantially reduce Alzheimer's disease. Turning that into a clinical trial with therapeutics has not been effective yet, but there are several people uh, working on it. Compounds that change metabolism, uh, directed to mitochondria, uh, dealing with metal metabolism, etc. But all of those are very early stage of um, and of development, and further have not been invested in to the same extent as the amyloid and now the tau approaches. I would love to say that Alzheimer's disease is caused by oxidative stress, since we're one of the originators of that idea, that oxidative stress is important, but actually oxidative stress is more a window to looking at the disease. It's a critical part of the pathogenesis, much like amyloid and tau are, and it gives you insight as what the initial causes might be. The oxidative stress uh, is closely tied to mitochondria, mitochondrial metabolism, and therefore may underlie the initial changes of the disease as a metabolic disorder. And that's what I think oxidative stress is really pointing out, that Alzheimer's disease is a carefully regulated metabolic event. Oxidative stress offers a new view of the disease. It links to all of the recent work suggesting effectiveness of exercise, stress reduction, um, diet, it's all of those linked to oxidative stress. It further links together the mitochondria. It also links together the amyloid and tau stories because both the amyloid and tau directly reduce oxidative stress. In the case of amyloid, it does it by binding copper and redox silence in it, tau, by being linked to hemoxygenase, an important antioxidant response element. You know, if it was so simple that Alzheimer's disease was oxidative stress disease, we would have attacked it very simply by raising vitamin E or other things. It's not that simple. Mitochondria, we know there's abnormalities of transport, uh, fusion fission properties, degradation properties, and accumulation of mitochondrial degradation products in the cell body. But how do all those things get together in such a way that you can target it? Um, and further complexity is that a lot of the changes one is seeing, just as the amyloid and tower appear to be protective responses. Oxidative stress also has protective responses and may be part of signal transduction pathways that if you actually block them with antioxidants, you can actually have problems. But there is promising data that oxidative stress could be an avenue for attack. Some studies we did and others have found similar results is that people with gout have about 75% reduction in Alzheimer's disease. Gout is the accumulation of uric acid at very high levels. Uric acid is a very important antioxidant for humans. Uh, some more recent studies that were published in the Journal of Alzheimer's Disease of people taking carotenoids um, actually showed benefit. So some types of antioxidants that are brain penetrant and used at high levels because um, appear to have some benefit. But it's very important to realize that when you look at oxidative stress, that many of the antioxidants, such as vitamin C, can cause oxidative stress just as much as they can reduce oxidative stress.